Welcome back to Arts and Humanities. Yesterday we went over melody with the elements of music. Today we're going to be finishing up melody and looking at harmony. So finishing up melody, um, one of the last things I have to tell you is melodies often have a note that the song centers itself on. So whenever you come to that moment in the song, it's going to sound like a point of relief. So say the note is C and that song centers around the note C. Basically, it has a family of notes structured associated to that note. So, a key also tells us what scale to play in music and which notes to play. So, melodies derive from scales. Um, there are different types of scales such as the major, the minor, the tonal, and blues. Now, take a look at this video and see what it's like listening to nursery rhymes that you normally would hear in a happier key and taking those nursery rhymes and looking at them in a minor key. Another thing is melodies can be conjunct and disjunct. So conjunct meaning that they are pleasant and disjunct meaning that they kind of sound harsh. So take a look at this video. I want you to think, what do you hear? Go ahead, watch it. So what you should hear is harmony. Harmony is created when two or more notes are played at the same time or sung simultaneously. So knowing what harmony is, um, listen to this video and see what all you can pick out. Um, you now know the elements of melody. You kind of know about harmony now. You know rhythm and you know tempo. So take a look at this see what you can find out. So go ahead and pause the video, check this video out. It's linked down below. So harmony is the art of combining pitches into chords. So that a chord is basically several notes played simultaneously as a block. Um, we think of harmony as vertical representation in pitch. When you think of melody, you should see a horizontal a representation of pitch so it's always moving forward but it's not really moving up and down oh well, other than when it's moving forward but a vertical pitch I'm sorry but the vertical representation of pitch with harmony is staggered altogether so these chords are arranged into sentence like patterns called chord progressions and here's some of the famous pop song chord progressions and that chord progression is one, five, six, sorry, minor six and four. So one, five, minor six and four. Go ahead and take a look at this video and listen to 10 songs that have the same chord progression. Link down below. So harmony, we also um, describe it just kind of like a melody. Um, it's relative to harshness. So what harshness do we hear with our ears? If it's consonants, it's going to sound pleasant. If it's dissonance, it's going to sound harsh. It's going to, so consonants is like a resolution to our ear and dissonance is tension. So here's our bass clef. Um, bass clef is normally what we write our harmonies in. You can write it in treble clef too, but a lot of harmonies and chords are wrote in bass clef for most of our popular songs. So just like the treble clef, we have line one, line two, line three, line four is important, and I'll tell you why in just a second, and line five. So if you notice, the tri I'm sorry, the bass clef is just basically a C, a backward C, and it has two dots. And if you notice, line four goes between those two dots. Now remember the treble clef, it had something that went around it on the second line and that indicated that that note was G. The bass clef is also known as the F clef, just how the treble clef is known as the G clef. So if we think about the treble clef and the line being G here, we should know that these two dots indicate that the line between them is F. Now, not everyone writes bass clef the correct way. And when it's wrote correctly, 
it looks like this. So again, line four, it's that F cleft to give it its name. So a way to remember base cleft is green birds don't fly away. So there we go, we have F here, so G, B, D, F, A. And if you get lost, just repeat the video. So, we also have spaces. We have space 1, space 2, space 3, and space 4. And that stands for All Cows Eat Grass, or A-C-E-G. Now, you're going to go, again, back into the modules. You're going to go ahead and practice your base clef code reader. And whenever you turn that in, you only have one more assignment for tomorrow. So great job, guys. Keep it up. Keep turning your work. And I'll see you next time.